Daddy? Yes? Why do babies have fathers? Back then, scientists knew more about the behavior of sperm and egg in the sex act than the behavior of man and woman. But that was changing, thanks to two men who were turning sexuality into a science. While Professor Alfred Kinsey was learning what we said we did in the bedroom, a young gynecologist at Washington University in St. Louis was determined to find out what we actually did and how it worked. His name was William Masters. He wanted to have a basic science of sexology, and he wanted to have some beginning data that we could build a whole science upon. And so we were studying every other system of the body. Why shouldn't we study the genitourinary system? There weren't many people willing to help out with a sex study in the 50s. But Dr. Masters happened to have a group of professionals as patients in his practice. He had a large number of prostitutes in his OBGYN practice, and he got permission to interview them. One thing they told him was if he wanted to know what women want, he would have to hire a woman to help him ask. The colleague he found was neither a scientist nor doctor. Virginia Johnson was just a divorced mother of two looking for an interesting job. She was certainly never bored. Soon after she started, the two rigged up a camera in a lab like this one to shoot into a woman's vagina. This film is the first document ever of the inside of a woman as she masturbated herself to orgasm. Then you're seeing an actual picture of orgasm. As she gets more and more stimulated, you see her moving to plateau, you see the whole body beginning to strain, um, and then you see what an orgasm is. Excitement, plateau, orgasm, and resolution. Those were the stages of sexual intercourse as Masters and Johnson observed them. All of these various recordings really are only used to establish a group of facts, a basic knowledge of what happens to the human male and female, so that we can ultimately apply this knowledge in the effective therapy of the grave concerns, the tremendously widespread concerns of human sexual inadequacy. Masters and Johnson once estimated they filmed over 10,000 orgasms during their research, yet scandalized medical journals refused to publish their findings. So in 1966, Masters and Johnson published their own book, Human Sexual Response. It became an instant bestseller. They had more influence on what couples actually do in the bedroom than anybody else. They changed everything. In 1970, they opened the nation's first sex therapy clinic. We primarily are focusing what we have to offer on the sexual relationship itself, the relationship of two people, an exercise in, in how to meet one another sexually in a little different way. They would ask the individual or the couple to engage in the activity that we'd be watching through one-way mirrors or two-way mirrors, and uh, there would be filming in the room. And there were sometimes were people coming in. Sometimes we had catheters taking blood and measuring the blood while they were having sex. And I'd walk in and take the test tubes out while people were having sex, and they didn't seem to notice. Masters and Johnson achieved an 80% success rate with their clients. But more importantly, their work had opened society and science to the possibilities of improving sexual performance.